Hi guys, it's Blackie. Okay, today I want to address a couple of questions that you guys have um, sent to me on the Ground Pounder series, which I have been very pleased and, and thankful that y'all have really responded to so well. Um, my video on the M65 field jacket really took off. It was over 60,000 views on that. Thank you very much. So, I've had a lot of you asking me general questions about surplus. Beyond where to get it, but one of the things is how to deal with it, how to take care of it, how to whatever. And also, the smell. Because all this canvas surplus has a certain smell to it, and I can't explain it other than that. And once you picked up one and took a smell, you'll know exactly what I meant. There's a smell to it. It's not bad, but at the same time, it's kind of dusty. Okay, so let's address that how to clean it okay you've gone to a yard sale you've gone to a thrift place or whatever or something off ebay and you found a butt pack or you found some other piece of gear or one of the sleeping bag covers that i recently talked about or an m65 field jacket and it's been stored for quite a while and it's got a kind of a smell to it what should you do okay what i do with my stuff is i use the bathtub run it you know Fill up the tub with warm water. Add some standard cleaning supplies like you'd use for your laundry. And get in there and surgitate it real good, you know. Let it soak for a little bit and then surgitate it real good. You know, take a soft brush, work all the material and etc. And you'll get that. And then when you get done, take it out and dry it. Now, things like the clothing, where you might have a jungle fatigue shirt or you might have the... Um, uh, field jacket or something like that you launder it as normal put it in a dryer you know you can run those through washers okay but remember a lot of this surplus is very old too still good and rugged and durable but like my field jackets you know from the 1960s so it's pushing 70 years old right now so I don't launder it as hard as I would my modern stuff I tend to take it run it into the bathtub give it a good clean at the end of the season and then I'm going to go hang it out and let it air dry then I put it up we'll talk about storage in just a minute okay so that's how you get the smell and it doesn't smell bad or whatever but that's a good time after you've done it you've washed it drained it what I what I typically do is I'll go in and I will wash it like I said I will then drain the tub turn on the tap and run it under the running cold water to rinse it very good wring it out a little bit lay it in the tub turn the water off and let it drip dry in the tub for a half hour or so wringing it out if it's something big like a pack I'll get in there and just take my bare feet and stamp on it lightly and squeeze the excess water out of it then I'm gonna take it outside I'm gonna do this on a nice sunny day I'm gonna put it outside and let it hang up and dry and if you got a pack or something block pretty good size stick something up in it like an empty trash can or something like a, a, a boiler a, a stock pot from the kitchen put it inside to hold it round you know and put it out in the sun and then go out there after a while and rotate it a little bit it'll dry a couple hours out in the sun and then after you've done it a complete day I take it in at night so don't get due on it and the next day I put it back out in the sun two days in the sun will air it rinse it clean it and etc now it's just as good as the day it was made okay go use it and enjoy it clothing like I said launder is normal go from that how about the big stuff well down sleeping bag this is model 49 mountain bags down sleeping bag and that needs special now in all of them inside usually you'll have a label that talks about laundering directions. This is what it was when it was military issue. But do not, I say this again, do not send a down sleeping bag or any real military sleeping bag out to a dry cleaners to have it clean like that. Because the chemicals they use, NAFTA, get into the batting, gets into the feathers. And that's toxic for you because it comes back, man, it don't smell bad, Blackie, I'd aired it out. Uh-huh. And then this winter, when you're in it and you're all zipped up nice and tight and your body heat warms those feathers up, 
that's when those fumes come out and they can be toxic to you. So it says on the labels, do not dry clean. So do not. What I recommend doing, again, with the bathtub, I don't do the down feather ones. Go online and look on how to treat down sleeping bags. There's a procedure and there's a chemical you can get to add to the water to preserve the feathers if you're doing down. Now, modern synthetic down, and that's the difference now between synthetic and natural down. Synthetic down, again, go look up how do you treat such a bag and follow those directions. Once you've treated a bag, you've aired it out, etc. Let's say I have been camping with this now and winter's over, like it is now in March. And I don't need this big old bag anymore. It's not going to be that cold. So I'm going to my lighter bags. In fact, the temperature this week has been in the 80s with nights in the 70s. So that simple liner I talked about, the cover, uh, sleeping bag cover, is more than adequate for me to eat right now in a hammock because the temperature is never going to get cold right now. However, this coming weekend, the temperature is going to be back down to 25 Saturday night. So I might need that big bag if I was camping out. So you kind of, kind of play it of the wind. What I typically do is I will keep my winter gear available until I'm pretty sure, okay, that's it. I'm, it's not going to be any cold weather. And then I'm going to take it, if I'm not laundering it, okay, and a lot of times I do not launder these bags until they need it. I'm going to take them out and I'm going to air it out. I'm going to open the bag up, turn it inside out, and I'm going to lay it up on top of my pickup truck, which you got a camper on it, in the broad sunlight. While I'm doing yard chores or whatever. Go flip it a couple times. I'm going to give it at least two or three hours of sunning and airing. I'll go through, fluff it up, all up and down the batting, real good to pump air into it, see? and I'll sun it a real good day. When it gets done for the end of the day, I'm gonna roll it up loosely, put it back in the house, and I'm gonna come out and do it a second day. So me personally, I air it and sun it two days. Now I'm gonna put it up, okay? And you do not store sleeping bags rolled up tight. This compresses it and we need fluffy for warmth. Rolled up blood tight, like we're carrying it. Um, to go camping is not a good way to store it because you're compressing those fibers and they don't ever wanna fluff back up so leaving it perpetually compressed for years and years rolled up in that closet it doesn't want to open back up so we want to fluff it up and air it I like to use the big laundry bags okay I put them into it and then I add something to it we'll get to that in storage in a minute but the big laundry bag now your web gear stuff like that your LBE and stuff like that simple clean a lot of times I'll just take a water hose to that and a soft brush with a little bit of, you know, something to clean with, something to do laundry with. And I'm going to rough it up, you know, take the brush and do over it like I'd wash the car. I'm going to rinse it real good and I'm going to let it dry. Once it's dry, now's a good time to treat it with permethrin or permethrin. I'm probably totally butchering that name, guys. But it's a treatment you get at big box stores and stuff. It's a mosquito repellent. It's an insect repellent. And so I'm going to spray it on there. But this is stuff that's usually in a yellow can, and it says, it's permethrin, I believe, and that it's not for put on your skin. It's for putting on gear, like hammocks, things like that. Don't spray tarps, because that might affect the waterproofing of the tarp. But things like tents on the outside, not the waterproofing part. Remember the mosquito net part? Hammocks, yes. Packs, yes. Rucksacks, yes. Web gear, yes. Because now when I'm wearing it, those now, because I'm wearing it, etc., have a anti-insect component to help keep bugs and stuff off of me and my gear, make my gear a little toxic to them. So something like my sleeping bag cover here that's going to be a summer sleeping bag. Yeah, I can do that because it's not going, you don't ever put this wet on your skin. Once it dries, it's safe for you to have it. You can take your field shirts and spray it and let it dry and be able to wear them. You just don't want to spray it like you spray bug spray on your bare skin. It would make you sick. Follow the directions on the can. Okay? So we've talked about treating it for insects. We've talked about cleaning it, etc. Now let's go into storage because 
my winter sets, I'm not going to need in the summer in Alabama. Now, you guys up north, I realize your nights get kind of cool. And uh, that was something that was a real eye-opener to me the first time I went up north, and it was 90-something during the day. It was 52 that night. And I think it was like July. So that was like, ee, you know. Yeah, you would need a sleeping bag. It's 4-degree temperature change. Whereas down here in my south, from really March, um, most of March, all the way to October, we're going to have days in the 80s minimum, maybe much more. And we're going to have nights in the 60s, maybe much warmer. So we don't need the big stuff. So I typically take my bulk clothing, like those big sweaters, that woolly pulley, those five buttons. And these are the end of the season. I'm going to do my laundering. I'm just going to take a weekend, do my laundering. And then I'm going to put them up. And I use storage tubs, you know. And on it, I've written wool or winter clothing or whatever and that put into storage because I'm not going to need it during the summer and I want to protect it against bugs, mice, and etc. because even in a house and let's live in the real world here for a second guys you can have the cleanest, nicest house in the world you're still going to get a mouse finds his way in there you're still going to get a cockroach finds his way in there eventually and we put out poison we do stuff to prevent that but that back closet and that back room that we never ever go in except maybe once a year, that's where you keep the, the Christmas decorations and the big winter stuff. He's not, you know, being exposed. He could hide back there. And so take some advice from an old woodsman that's lost gear. That I put stuff up in boxes and I put it up in the back closet or whatever and I thought, man, it's safe, everything's great. And then November rolls around, and us and the guys, we're going down on the river, and we're going to camp out, and I need a big sleeping bag. And I've gone in there, and I pull out my big old sleeping bag. Looked good. Never checked it. Threw it in the truck. Got out there, and oh, about 11 o'clock that night, I went to open it up. And found about three generations of mice that had a good nest in the middle of that thing. They'd gone down through the middle, right in there, and all them feathers. couldn't sleep in it so we want to put our gear up and it be protected our big winter stuff so here's how to do it I'm gonna use plastic tubs I'm gonna take my plastic tub I'm gonna put my stuff into it let me draw this up for you right quick I'm gonna take my plastic tub it's got that snap on lid okay on the end where I'm gonna slide it out I'm gonna write the name like camp gear or wool if it's in big old woolly sweaters where's my big wool blankets or whatever and I'm gonna put my stuff in here laid flat kind of loosely when I get close to the top like an inch down I'm gonna put a big piece of cardboard all the way across right there and then you know in the pet department of Walmart or the pet store or whatever, go look for the rabbit stuff. And in that area, you're going to find this red cedar shavings. It's designed to go into a rabbit cage or something like that. I'm going to take some of those red cedar shavings and I'm going to put it right here on top of that cardboard. Now I'm going to snap that lid on. Okay, why am I using red cedar? Well, you remember all the old timers had red cedar closets, red cedar hope chest, red cedar blanket boxes. There was a reason. No insect likes the smell of cedar. It's, it's a natural insect repellent. Cedar doesn't rot very fast at all. That's one of the reasons cedar trees were used as posts and all kinds of stuff through the years. And that's the reason they would turn them into lumber and make a red cedar closet. That was the storage room. And the oils that come out of red cedar repel insects and mice and things like that because it's not palatable to them. So by me putting my gear down here and then putting that layer of red cedar there on the top, I've done two things. One, 
I've ensured no insects going to go in there. Moths, uh, roaches, nothing like that. It's going to get in there and destroy my wool sweaters, my wool blankets, my expensive whatever that I spent real money for. When you spent $300 for a wool blanket, and next year when you pick it up, there's a hole that big in the middle of it, you're not going to be happy. So this prevents that, okay? It also adds the smell of cedar, which most humans like the smell of cedar. So it's a natural insect repellent. So next year when I pull it out, my sweater that I'm going to wear on this camping trip smells like cedar and is repellent to insects. Three points right there. Okay. But what if, and you remember the big old sleeping bag? I said put it into a big um, laundry bag or something. Something kind of loose so it's not compressed. Well, I want to protect it too, but I don't want to have to go get a big old huge tub. I can put it into one of them large tubs. But I want to just put it in that bag, okay? They make cedar block, cedar blocks. Go look at where the ironing board and the stuff like that is, usually in your department stores. And you're going to find these blocks to go in the closet. Cedar balls, stuff like that, you can do that. Moth balls can also be used, but I don't like the smell of moth balls. I'd rather have the smell of cedar. It smells more natural, okay, to me, especially for my camping gear. I can make up a satchel. And all a satchel is is pick up a pair of ladies' pantyhose, okay, super cheap. So, you've got the two legs of a pair of pantyhose, just like long underwear. I'm going to take some of them red cedar shavings, big handful, two handful, and I'm going to fill up this like bottom third. Then I'm going to take it and I'm going to twist it up tight and do an overhand knot. I'm going to space and I'm going to do another overhand knot. So I got knot there and a knot there. Now I cut it between them knots. Okay? This satchel right here of red cedar shavings, I go put in the back bag with the uh, sleeping bag. Takes care of it. That smell will permeate throughout the whole thing and therefore keep any insects and stuff out of my sleeping bag. So next year when I pull that sucker out, it's safe, okay? By doing it this way, I can now come up here and do it again. And make another satchel. And I can make six, eight, ten of them, depending on what all I'm doing. So, one of them bags like this, it's only like four or five bucks, of the cedar shavings, I can turn around and make those to go into all my camp boxes. And what's left don't waste it. Put it in one of these tied up and go throw it in your sock drawer. Go put it in your regular underwear drawer or whatever. Again, the smell gets through it. I like to take them and I've got field shirts that I wear when I'm camping and I'm doing outdoor stuff. I just throw a satchel of it in there. And so these are the ones I'm going to be using during summer. But they smell like cedar and so it's an insect repellent. See? Now, Like many of you, and many of you have kids and stuff like that, and you go, Blake, I ain't got a lot of room. Uh, you know, I, I want to do this, but I got to store my stuff out in the garage or that old barn out there, or that storage building out there. And we got a mouse problem, and I'm scared to put my wool and my stuff out there, even though it's in that plastic tub, even though it's got the bug repellent in it. Ugh, and you're right. Well, for many years, I had a barn. It was a had been a place for tractor and farm equipment and then when we got the place we didn't have the tractor we had a boat we put out there and on the left hand side of this enclosed but it's no door on it's open to the world on either end i had to store my camping stuff out there because there was no way no room in the house for it so how did i store it to protect it like this
trash can. Okay, a trash can. Now what you're gonna go do is get a metal trash can, like the ones that go out of the road, okay? At the store, go ahead and fit the lid and make sure the lid fits well. Snap the lid on, turn the can upside down and look and make sure it ain't got no big gaps or anything, okay? Now, I'm gonna take my gear and I'm gonna put it in here of my rolled up shirts, a blanket, you know, sleeping bag, da 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 da. And like before, when I get up here at the top, like an inch down from the top, I'm gonna put red cedar shavings on top of that piece of cardboard. Now in the seam that goes all the way around on the inside of the lid, that locks over the rim, I'm gonna put Vaseline on that. Just take some cheap Vaseline and reel it in real good. Now when I put that lid up there and I push down and bonk, and it snaps on. Now from this handle, I run a cord over through that one to this handle, and up here in the top, I use a Canadian jam knot. Rip, pull that sucker tight. It's stored. The mice and stuff are gonna, not gonna gnaw through that steel can. It smells like cedar. The insects aren't gonna wanna go in there. So if an ant or something comes up and goes, the Vaseline clogs it up. Once they gnaw through that, it smells like cedar and they don't want to go into it. I have stored stuff in an open barn like this for several years. And we've opened it up and it'd be perfectly fine. Because nothing's going to gnaw in and no insects are going to go in there. So that's a way to store it in an outdoor environment, so to speak, that's actually a garage. You know, I've got a garage, but the door's never closed those type things, or a boat shed, or a storage building out back that, yeah, yeah, you know, bugs get in there, mice get in there, I don't want to lose my expensive camping gear. That's a way to do it. And that way, I labeled the can, so I had a can that was just my big heavy sweaters and my big heavy, you know, stuff, went into that one, wool. This one was blankets. This one was other things like camp gear, LBE, stuff like that and so I knew where to look it was already organized now can I go open that up and seal it back up absolutely just unhook lift and I can grab that cardboard and gently lift straight up with the cedar still laying on top of it yes yeah, some fall off but it doesn't hurt anything if a piece of cedar falls down on your shirt or something it doesn't hurt it it's just getting more smell that's it and in fact, when I go to open that can up, because now it's winter, and I want all my winter clothes, okay? What am I going to do with that cedar right there? Well, it's, it's had, you know, a year now, and it's kind of losing the smell. Well, A, it's cheap, easy to recycle. I'll take that out to the garden and mix it into the garden around things. Or how about take that and put it into one of them satchels, you know? Um, and here's a trick for the house has nothing to do with woodcraft, bushcraft. Remember one of them hose satchels? You go to where your air conditioning filter goes in, or furnace filter for my friends up north, and you unscrew that and you open it up and you pull that filter out, you're gonna leave the filter in place and you're gonna hang that satchel. Put a string on it or just have a big loose part where I can put it over that door hanging on the inside, close it and screw the knob. Now the air flowing through this is going to make the whole house smell like red cedar. We like that. And guess what don't like the smell of red cedar? All the insects. So the flies, the bugs, the gnats don't want to come in the house. We lived next to a cow pasture at one point. And in the height of the summer, there was flies everywhere. Well, we started doing that because if you open the door, 20 of them came in. And it got where you wouldn't have flies in the house. They wouldn't come in the house because I would make satchels like that. Just get one of them big bags and take a whole pantyhose and just stuff it. And put it inside, hook so it wouldn't get sucked up into the machinery. But where the air went to go through that and it made my entire house smell like red cedar. And the bugs and the insects didn't want to come in my house because of that. So there's a little tip or trick to throw in there. So, in conclusion, when you go and find your surplus and it's got that smell, if you find it offensive or you just want to clean it, make sure it's clean when you start. Use the bathtub. 
go in there, put some warm, you know, warm tap water in it, add the stuff, surgitate it around, work it in the water, drain it out, rinse it under the faucet, then let it drip dry, wring all you can, and then put it out on a nice sunny day and dry it. Give it a second day of drying to make sure that canvas is fully dry. Canvas takes a while to dry. Now's a good time to add that spray silicon, uh, like Scotch Guard and stuff, if you want to waterproof a butt pack or something like that with a spray, that's a good time to do it. Your field jacket can be laundered regularly. Your field clothes can be laundered regularly. The field jacket can also be sprayed with that to make it more water repellent. You can also spray it with permethrin to make it more of an insect repellent. You can store your sleeping bags and stuff like that after you've aired them out and sunned them uh, in a big loose bag like a big laundry bag. I prefer solid as opposed to mesh. Okay, I should have said that earlier, but a solid laundry bag, a nylon one or canvas works fine as long as it's solid. And then I put a satchel of red cedar shavings into it. I can store in plastic tubs my clothing and stuff for the next season and use red cedar to add a good smell, a natural smell to help mask my scent for hunting, etc. And to be something that the insects don't like, okay? And yes, you can use permethrin and the red cedar together. That's what I've done. I can also use a trash can for a less than ideal storage where I just don't have the space and I need to store it out in the garage or out in the barn or something like that where things could get to it. A steel can does a good job. Hope you enjoyed this video, guys, and I hope it brought you some ideas and some ways to do this. And thank you very, very much for supporting my channel. So, if you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button and please leave me a comment down there. Tell me what you think or is there something that you've learned to do that, hey, might be a great idea. Let me know about it. Till next time, I'm Blackie wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.